Praise the Lord. Father, we want to thank you for a beautiful day that you have enabled us. You have quickened us to embrace this brand new day. We return all the praise and all the glory back to you in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that you will anoint the ears of my listeners and my viewers to intend that after listening to this message, there will be a change, there will be a change, there will be a shift in the spirit man in the name of Jesus. Lord, you will give them, you will, you help them to focus towards receiving the end of our faith, making heaven at the end of the day in the name of Jesus. Amen. I'm no longer a slave to sin. I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to sin. Because I am a child of God. Praise the Lord. I'm sharing on the culture of heaven. The culture of heaven. Our text is taken from the book of Philippians chapter 3, verse 20 and 21. And I read, For our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the walking whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Are you there a believer? What is the, what is the primary objective of believing in Christ? If only our hope is to live in this world without the hope of heaven in view, Scripture said we are men most miserable. You are supposed to be pitied because life is more than what we see on earth. There's a beautiful life. There's a spiritual life out there. Praise the Lord. So as a people who are assessing, who are going to assess heaven, people who are targeting heaven at the end of the day, heaven has a culture. There's a culture of heaven for heaven's citizens. And if you must get to heaven, if your primary objective is to get to heaven at the end of the day, when you live this life, therefore, you must imbibe the culture of heaven. While you live on earth, you must live by the culture of heaven. Knowing that the Bible said, though we are in this world, we are not of this world. Though we are in this world, we are not of this world. We are foreigners in this world. We are just like our father Abraham who just pitched our tent here. We are just living. We are temporary citizens on earth. Primarily, we are the citizens of heaven. That's what we are going at the end of the day. That's what we should live, establishing the lifestyle, the culture of our citizen, of, of our nation. We belong to the nation of Israel. Yes, we are the citizens of heaven. So we live here, we showcase the culture of the very nation where we belong, where we came from. Praise the Lord. And if you are living in this world and you are living by the culture of this world, that's why you may not be. In fact, let me not say you may. Let me not say, I will say you may. That's why you will not make heaven. If you leave, if you imbibe the culture of the world. That was why when, when, when Israel departed Egypt to Canaan, God warned them. You are going to live among the ungodly. You are going to live among a people who serve gods. Little, little gods. Be careful so that you don't serve their God. Be careful so that their culture will not influence you. That was why he even gave them. An instruction say, eat on living bread. Eat on living bread. There would be no there will be no living bread among you. There will be no living bread among you. That means there will be no adulteration. There will be no adulteration. There will be no ad check your character. Check your character. There will be no adulteration. You have to be real. You have to be real. You have to be natural. A natural Israel. 
doesn't worship idol. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, I'm just going to take, go straight to the points right here. We have the culture of obedience. Number one, every heaven citizen must have the culture for obedience. We obey our God. We obey our God. Because of that obedience, that's why we try to live by the culture of heaven. Because if you don't obey, you cannot take instruction. If you can't obey, you can never take instruction. So, first of all, we obey our God. Whatever he told us to do by the scripture, that's what we do. God does not speak vain words. He never, he has never spoken any vain words. So, every word of instruction he left with us, it is our guiding principle. It's our guiding road. It's our roadmap. The word of God is our roadmap to where we are headed. So we listen to God's word. We obey God's word. We love God's word. We love the word of instruction. We do not hate instruction. Praise the Lord. Now, I'm rushing fast because of time, always because of time. Number two is love. Love. We have the culture of love. We have the culture of love as heaven citizens because love brought us to this platform, the love of God, the love of Christ. When he died on the cross of Calvary because of love, Jesus was a slave to love. He was a slave to love. He was nailed, killed as a slave for love. So we are expected to love, not the love of this world, not the love that has to do with what you gain, not the love of who loves you, you love them. No. We love, we have the culture of love. In fact, we're even told to love our enemies. If you can love, you will not access heaven. If you can love the love of God, not like the love of the world, if you can love, you may not access heaven at the end of the day. All your occupation to make heaven at the end of the day may end as a mirage. I do not pray that for you. Praise the Lord. Number two, we have the culture of forgiveness. These things are, these, these things are in fact, they are key instruction. Key principles. These are laws. In fact, these cultures are laws. These are laws. The laws of the spirit. Laws that govern heaven. Where you think you are going at the end of the day. And no lawless person can get to heaven. Praise God. No lawless person can get to heaven. You must forgive. Forgiveness is key. No matter what they've done to you. No matter how offended you are. You are expected to forgive your neighbor, even forgive your enemy. Live in forgiveness for your sake because of where you are headed, because of where you are going. Remember, we are not going the same place. Don't follow people who do not forgive. You see a friend, a neighbor who doesn't forgive, his lifestyle or her lifestyle tend to, tend to excite you, want to you know, emulate the way they live. Let me tell you. We are going, we're not always going the same place. Even children born of the same mother, they may not always be going the same place. Be careful, be intentional about your own journey, where you are going. What are the laws that governs where you are going? What, what, what are the instructions that you should obey that should take you to where you are going? Take heed to them. Take heed to them. Forget the man, the woman who live lawless. They will end up here. Praise the Lord. So forgiveness is key. It's primary. If you want to access heaven, you must learn to forgive. It might not be very, very easy at the beginning, but if you continue and continue to practice it, at the end of the day, you will find that it's become a natural thing to you. People offend you and you just forgive them. Without even them asking them asking you for forgiveness, you forgive them because you know, it's not inherent in your character. Praise the Lord. Now, Another one is faithfulness towards God. Faithfulness towards God. We live by faith and die by faith. The just shall live by faith. If he shrinks back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. Hebrew 13, verse 29. The just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. If he shrinks back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. Every heaven citizen, everyone who loves heaven, who wants to make heaven at the end of the day, 
you must live by faith. It's primary, it's key. You must not live faith, uh, uh, faithless. Faith towards God, faith towards God, that God is able to do what he has promised you. That God is able to take you away from this corrupt world at the end of the day. Either in the flesh, when you well, when you die in the flesh. Ah, Lord, I, 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 if it's possible, I would want to be the second Eli, uh, Elijah. I would want to be this, the second Enoch that went to heaven without seeing flesh, dead in the flesh. I love that. But whether you are going like that, whether you will go after when you die from now or in the flesh, the beauty of it is that at the end of the day, you make heaven. So if you must make heaven, you must live by faith. You must live by faith. Praise the Lord. Number five, we live a disciplined life. Discipline is a culture of heaven. Discipline is a culture of heaven. Let me tell you, we have said so much. Of, many preachers have abused the word. Many preachers have abused the word grace. By the grace of God, we'll make heaven. By the grace of God, we'll make heaven. Fine. Thank God by the grace of God. Yes, it's even grace that also brought us to the platform of salvation. But let me tell you, there are many things grace cannot do for you. Grace, all, in fact, teaches you to live a disciplined life. Grace teaches you to, to live a disciplined life. You can't make heaven if you are not disciplined. No great crashers there. No disobedient folk will ever see the, the wall of heaven. You can never. You must be disciplined. You must be disciplined. Discipline yourself to love. Discipline yourself to obey. Discipline yourself to take instruction. Discipline yourself to obey God's word. Discipline yourself to live holy. It takes discipline to live holy. It takes discipline to live righteous. It takes discipline to see sin and say, no, I will not, I will not be part of sin. I will live in sin. It takes discipline to live a sin-free life, which is also possible on earth. It takes discipline. You must be disciplined. See, Jesus didn't, doesn't live the life for you. He can't live the life for you. It is you that lives the life. So it's your discipline. God doesn't live for anybody. He gave you life, you live it. You live by discipline. You must be disciplined. Without discipline, you can't make heaven. Discipline will help you not to live like the world. Yes. You will see all the crazy fashion going on in the world, but because you are disciplined about your culture, the culture of where you are headed, you will wear your own robe. You wear your own robe. We have we have a culture, we don't have a culture of nakedness like Nakedness is, is all over the world. Nakedness, men are going topless. Women are going uh, topless. Uh, I mean, today in the world, if you can, if you can go uh, naked, you, you, you are one of the top-notch actors or actresses. In fact, you could even have received money for, for, for going naked. You see, it is the culture of the world, the culture of the people that are perishing, the culture of the people that have lost their morale. You know, in the world, we don't have morals again. We don't have morals again. We scarcely, in Africa then, we used to, we used to obey and respect elders today. All those cultures are, are fizzling, out, fizzling out. But in heaven, we have a culture of respect. We have a culture of respect. We respect people. We respect people. We respect people who are there for us. And even those who are not there, we respect the culture of respect. It takes discipline to respect. Praise the Lord. Now, culture of humility. Humility. When you are humble, you are not proud. We're living in a, in a world filled with pride. Pride and ego. Pride and ego. Pride and ego. Those who are humble, they are not proud. You must vet yourself. You must look at yourself. The way you live, the way you talk, the way you carry your life, your, your conversation in this life. You must see if there's a trace of pride. You must know whether you are humble. And somebody will say, how would I know if I'm humble? Check your attitude. How arrogant are you? How, arrogant, how abusive are you if you are not? That's are the things that tell that will begin to tell you that uh, you may not have the character of, 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 of pride and arrogance. You must be humble. Maintain humility. The world is dying. 
The word is that don't die with the world. What you would, what there are what outstanding qualities and characters you used to know a believer, a Christian, by the way he talks, by the way he dresses or she dresses, the dress, the culture. Like I said, sometimes when you see an Igbo man, the way he dresses, you will know. When you see an English man, you will know because of their dressing. When you see a Yoruba man, because of their tribal mark and their clothes they, they wear. When you see an Asa man, the same. Let me ask you, a believer, you want heaven. You've been going to church. Can somebody look at you and say you're a believer by the way you dress, by the way you talk? These are telltale. These are signs that tells the world without them coming to probe your character. You see, what we display is what comes from our heart, our attitude, the way, even the way we walk. The way we walk, that's, that's how you, you can be able to tell by the way we behave. Can somebody look at you and say, yeah, this man is a believer. This man is a believer. Even if they don't have 100% and they're not sure, but something will tell them that your composer, your lifestyle will tell yes, this man may be somebody like this, even if they can't be able to define you 100% accurate. Praise the Lord. Because of time, we will continue on at that day. Are you there? And you want to give your life to Christ. You want to live with the culture of heaven. You want God to help you quicken. You've been trying, you've been failing. I was like that sometime in my life. I tried so much. And one day I cried unto God. I said, if it was a challenge to God, I said, Father, if you can help me live the life of God, your life, take me away from this, from this, from this earth. What's the meaning of life when I can live to 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 make the one who created me to be happy, who died on the cross for me? When I can live in obedience, to obey him. So to make him happy. So why am I living here? Take me away. But the, one day the Lord answered this prayer and gave me strength. As many as believe, he gave power to become the son. He gave me that power. Since then, I have not backlid it anymore. And I will never backlid anymore. So, so today, you want to give your life to Christ. And you want to receive the power to become a son, a daughter of God. So you can be able to live by the culture of heaven. And not the world. Not the perishing world. Not the, the, the world that will be destroyed. Say after me in Jesus' name. Father, I come to you today appreciating what you did for me on the cross of Calvary where you died and used your blood and your flesh to sacrifice. You made an ultimate sacrifice for my sin and paid for every generational sin. The sin of my fathers and my mothers, even my own sin. Today, Lord, I appreciate all that and I repent of my sins asking you now to wash me with your blood and make me whole. Please write my name in the book of life. I make a public declaration today that I have moved kingdoms. I have moved kingdoms from the kingdom of Satan to the kingdom of his marvelous light, the kingdom of his son, Jesus Christ. I am a heaven citizen. I am born again. Sin shall have no dominion over me from today. To God be the glory. Thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Viewers, Thank you so, so very much for listening. And I pray that you will not be among those who hear the, 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 the perfect law of liberty. And after that you've heard, you will forget. You will be one of those that will remember and continue to practice and continue to practice until you will see Jesus in the flesh and be raptured away from this, from this evil world. The Lord bless you and keep you rapturable in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.